Welcome to Brainish English Stories. The next afternoon, three children from the large family sat in the Indian man's library, trying to make him feel happy. They were allowed to come in because he had invited them. He had been very worried for some time, and today he was waiting for something important. This important thing was the return of Mr. Carmichael from Moscow. Mr. Carmichael's stay in Moscow had been longer than expected. When he first got there, he could not find the family he was looking for. When he finally thought he had found them and went to their house, he was told they were away on a trip. He could not reach them, so he decided to stay in Moscow until they came back. Mr. Carrisford sat in his chair, and Janet sat on the floor next to him. He liked Janet very much. Nora found a small stool to sit on, and Donald was sitting on the tiger's head that was part of the rug made from the animal skin. He was riding it a bit too wildly. Don't make so much noise, Donald, Janet said. When you try to make a sick person happy, you don't do it loudly. Maybe making happy is too loud, Mr. Carrisford, she asked the Indian man. But he only patted her shoulder. No, it isn't, he answered. And it helps me not to think too much. I'm going to be quiet, Donald shouted. We will all be as quiet as mice. Mice don't make noise like that, said Janet. Donald used his handkerchief as a bridle and bounced up and down on the tiger's head. A lot of mice might make noise, he said happily. A thousand mice might. I don't think even fifty thousand mice would, said Janet seriously. We have to be as quiet as one mouse. Mr. Carrisford laughed and patted her shoulder again. Papa will be here soon, she said. Can we talk about the lost little girl? I don't think I can talk about anything else right now, the Indian man answered, looking tired. We like her so much, said Nora. We call her the little unfairy princess. Why? the Indian man asked, because the large family's ideas always made him forget things a little. Janet answered, It is because, even though she is not really a fairy, she will be very rich when she is found, like a princess in a fairy tale. We called her the fairy princess at first, but it didn't quite fit. Is it true, said Nora, that her papa gave all his money to a friend to put in a mine with diamonds, and then the friend thought he lost all the money and ran away because he felt like a robber? But he wasn't really a robber, added Janet quickly. The Indian man took her hand quickly. No, he wasn't really, he said. I feel sorry for the friend, Janet said. I can't help it. He didn't mean to do it, and it would break his heart. I am sure it would break his heart. You are a very understanding little girl, Janet, the Indian man said, and he held her hand tightly. Did you tell Mr. Carrisford, Donald shouted again, about the little girl who isn't a beggar? Did you tell him she has new nice clothes? Maybe someone found her when she was lost. There's a cab, exclaimed Janet. It's stopping in front of the door. It is Papa. They all ran to the windows to look out. Yes, it's Papa, Donald said. But there is no little girl. All three of them quickly ran out of the room and into the hall. This is how they always welcomed their father. They could be heard jumping up and down, clapping their hands, and being picked up and kissed. Mr. Carrisford tried to get up, but fell back again. It is no use, he said. I am so weak. Mr. Carmichael's voice came closer to the door. 
No, children, he was saying. You may come in after I have talked to Mr. Carrisford. Go and play with Ram Das. Then the door opened and he came in. He looked healthier than ever and brought a feeling of freshness and health with him, but his eyes looked worried and sad when he saw Mr. Carrisford's eager face as they shook hands. What news? Mr. Carrisford asked. The child the Russian people adopted? She is not the child we are looking for, Mr. Carmichael answered. She is much younger than Captain Crewe's little girl. Her name is Emily Carew. I have seen and talked to her. The Russians told me everything about her. The Indian man looked very tired and sad. His hand fell from Mr. Carmichael's. Then we have to start the search all over again, he said. That is all. Please sit down. Mr. Carmichael sat down. Somehow, he had grown to like this sad man. Mr. Carmichael was very healthy and happy, surrounded by cheerful and loving people, so he felt very sorry for someone who was lonely and sick. If there had been just one happy little voice in the house, it would have felt less lonely. And carrying the thought that he had seemed to hurt and abandon a child was a terrible thing. Come, come, Mr. Carmichael said in a cheerful voice. We'll find her yet. We must start right away. No time can be wasted, Mr. Carrisford said, worried. Do you have any new ideas at all? Mr. Carmichael felt a bit restless, and he got up and started to walk around the room, looking thoughtful but unsure. Well, maybe, he said. I don't know how good the idea is. The fact is, I had an idea while thinking on the train from Dover. What was it? If she is alive, she is somewhere. Yes, she is somewhere. We have looked at the schools in Paris. Let's stop looking in Paris and start in London. That was my idea, to search in London. There are many schools in London, said Mr. Carrisford. Then he suddenly remembered something. By the way, there is one next door. Then we will start there. We cannot start closer than next door. No, said Carrisford. There is a child there who interests me, but she is not a student. She is a small, dark, sad girl, very different from poor Crewe's child. Maybe the magic was working again at that very moment, the beautiful magic. It really seemed like it might be. What made Ram Das come into the room just as his master was talking? He came in respectfully, but with a bit of excitement in his dark, shining eyes. Sahib, Ram Dass said, the child herself has come the child you felt sorry for. She brings back the monkey who ran away to her attic under the roof. I asked her to stay. I thought it would make you happy to see and talk to her. Who is she? asked Mr. Carmichael. God knows, Mr. Carrisford answered. She is the child I told you about. A little servant at the school. He waved his hand to Ram Das and said, Yes, I want to see her. Go and bring her in. Then he turned to Mr. Carmichael. While you were away, he explained, I felt very hopeless. The days were so dark and long. Ram Das told me about this child's sad life, and together we made a plan to help her. It was probably a childish thing to do, but it gave me something to plan and think about. Without Ram Das's help, it could not have been done. Then Sarah came into the room. She carried the monkey in her arms, and he clearly did not want to leave her. He was holding on to her and chattering, 
and the excitement of being in the Indian gentleman's room made Sarah's cheeks red. Your monkey ran away again, she said in her pretty voice. He came to my attic window last night, and I took him in because it was so cold. I would have brought him back if it had not been so late. I knew you were sick and might not like to be disturbed. The Indian gentleman's tired eyes looked at her with interest. That was very kind of you, he said. Sarah looked toward Ram Das, who stood near the door. Shall I give him to the Lasker? she asked. How do you know he is a Lasker? said the Indian gentleman, smiling a little. Oh, I know Lasker, Sarah said, handing over the unwilling monkey. I was born in India. The Indian gentleman suddenly sat upright, and his expression changed so much that Sarah was a bit startled. You were born in India, he exclaimed, were you? Come here. And he held out his hand. Sarah went to him and put her hand in his, as he seemed to want to take it. She stood still, and her green-gray eyes looked at his with wonder. Something seemed to be the matter with him. You live next door? he asked. Yes, I live at Miss Minchin School. But you are not one of her students? A strange little smile appeared on Sarah's mouth. She paused for a moment. I don't think I know exactly what I am, she replied. Why not? At first, I was a student and a special boarder, but now, you are a student. What are you now? The sad little smile was on Sarah's lips again. I sleep in the attic, next to the maid who cleans dishes, she said. I run errands for the cook, I do anything she tells me, and I teach the little children their lessons. Ask her questions, Carmichael, said Mr. Carrisford, sinking back as if he had lost his strength. Ask her. I cannot. The kind father of the large family knew how to ask little girls questions. Sarah realized how much practice he had when he spoke to her in his nice, encouraging voice. What do you mean by, at first, my child? he asked. When I was first taken there by my papa. Where's your papa? He died, said Sarah, very quietly. He lost all his money and there was none left for me. There was no one to take care of me or to pay Miss Minchin. Carmichael, the Indian gentleman cried out loudly. Carmichael, we must not scare her, Mr. Carmichael said quietly to him. Then he said to Sarah, so you were sent up into the attic and made to do lots of work. Is that right? There was no one to take care of me, said Sarah. There was no money. I belonged to nobody. How did your father lose his money? The Indian gentleman asked quickly. He did not lose it himself, Sarah answered, becoming more curious each moment. He had a friend he liked very much. He was very fond of him. It was his friend who took his money. He trusted his friend too much. The Indian gentleman started breathing faster. The friend might not have wanted to do harm, he said. It might have been a mistake. Sarah did not know how hard her quiet voice sounded as she answered. If she had known, she would have tried to make it softer for the Indian gentleman. The suffering was just as bad for my papa, she said. It killed him. What was your father's name? The Indian gentleman asked. Tell me. His name was Ralph Crewe, Sarah answered, feeling surprised. Captain Crewe. He died in India. The tired man's face changed, and Ram Das ran to his master's side. Carmichael, the sick man gasped. It is the child the child. 
For a moment, Sarah thought he was going to die. Ram Das gave him some medicine, holding it to his lips. Sarah stood near, shaking a little. She looked in a confused way at Mr. Carmichael. What child am I? she asked softly. He was your father's friend, Mr. Carmichael answered her. Don't be scared. We have been looking for you for two years. Sarah put her hand to her forehead and her mouth trembled. She spoke as if she were in a dream. And I was at Miss Minchin's all the while, she half whispered. Just on the other side of the wall.